Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. On today's show, we're looking at downtown. If you haven't visited in a while, much has changed in downtown Phoenix, and we're about to go on the national stage when we host Super Bowl Central in January. But the transformation of downtown is far from over. On today's show, we're going to hear more about downtown's development and get details on what the Super Bowl is bringing to Phoenix. With us now to talk about the big picture for downtown is David Kreider, CEO of Downtown Phoenix, Inc. David, welcome to the show. Uh, Councilwoman Williams, it's great to be here with you. So first, tell us what your organization is. Well, our, our organization is really a collaboration between uh, the downtown business uh, leadership. So, you know, Don Brand, who is uh, with uh, APS and the Suns and the Diamondbacks and Alliance Bank, uh, those types of companies uh, are on our board. But also the city leadership is on our board and probably as important of uh, the neighborhood and community leadership. So I think for the first time, we have a downtown organization that is really a collaboration between uh, the different elements that are driving us to what I think is a very positive future. Well, one of the things we were just talking about is how downtown has changed, the demographics. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it, downtown Phoenix was, was really in trouble in the 60s and 70s, uh, and really through mostly strong business leadership, there was a, a investments to stabilize downtown with the convention center, uh, and then, of course, the big move was, uh, was Jerry Colangelo and the Suns agreeing to move the arena downtown. Uh, and we really f we focused on these big projects, and we, uh, we got a lot of really important things done. Uh, and at the same time, we had some urban pioneers that went into the historic neighborhoods and started to create a sense of community. Uh, but now the demographics is really working in the favor of downtowns all over the United States, including Phoenix. We have a very, very large generation of uh, young adults that are moving into the workforce, and it's become a very urban generation. So now we're aggregating uh, tremendous uh, community and neighborhood vitality around the downtown area. Uh, and then of course also the arts community has driven a lot of kind of the positive activity that's happened. I've been surprised, <clears throat> pardon me, how many uh, people I know who have retired and decided to move downtown. That they want the convenience, they can take light rail to the train, they don't have to worry about a yard anymore, and it just fits the retirement style. Yeah, you've got these two huge generations. You've got these uh, active, empty nest baby boomers who are gravitating towards a more urban environment that's easier uh, for them and, and where they're living in a vibrant place. And you've got this large collection of uh, young people that are gravitating into these urban areas. And, uh, you know, I remember when you could drive downtown and uh, you, you wouldn't see somebody on a bicycle for three or four weeks at a time. And now, you know, just watching uh, these kids just riding around uh, downtown on their bikes and going to class and going to work, it's, it's really a great thing. I can remember you could downtown on the evening after five or weekend, <clears throat> you could literally not see a soul. Right, it's it, the, the, the whole foodie culture and uh, in the arts uh, part of downtown has really made it more vibrant. There's dozens and dozens of new restaurants uh, downtown. They're almost all entrepreneurial, chef-owned restaurants where, or were family-owned uh, restaurants, and it's really creating a lot of street-level activity. Um, and it's benefiting the rest of the city because the sales tax numbers within downtown uh, even during um, the recession, uh, we're escalating dramatically. So uh, that's been very, very positive. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you see coming in the future? Um, so I, I believe what's going to happen in the future is that we are really going to aggregate more and more people living within the downtown area. Um, and I think we could have 10, 15, 20,000 more people uh, aspire to live in and around downtown. Uh, many of the traditional suburban uh, residential developers are focused on downtown. They're either building a product right now or they're looking at activities. I, I think we could easily get you know, 500, 700, 800 new units every year built within uh, the downtown area. 
Um, you know, one of the things that uh, people don't focus on also is how close uh, downtown Phoenix is to Sky Harbor Airport. And now having this uh, direct rail connection, to, not just to the airport, but now with the airport train connecting to all the terminals, you have this tremendous synergy of employment and education um, and, um, and population growth, which is very positive. It's really coming together. How many years did we work on this? Uh, you, you and I go back a, a long <laughs> way together, but um, there has been a, a lot of uh, political will and support because you know there are only certain parts of our community that are our front door to the rest of the region. You know, when people come into a downtown, they look at the downtown and it's really reflective of our aspirations as a community. Maybe the airport uh, the same way. We also have a lot of scenic beauty here. And um, when, when you look at our peer cities, uh, places like Denver and Seattle and San Diego, uh, they're a little bit advanced beyond us, but we're definitely moving in that direction in terms of our urban core. Well, considering they have a hundred years um, history yes. um, beyond what Phoenix does, we're catching up pretty quickly. We, we are, because we're, we're a big, uh, vibrant, heavily populated region, and in the region there are a lot of people that have aspired for more of an urban lifestyle, but we really haven't had the opportunities for them. Um, and so I think that's beginning to happen now. And um, I think it's gonna uh, really benefit the city in the long run. I mean, the other area where we've also seen tremendous growth is, um, is in the hotel and tourism part of downtown. The number of hotel rooms have doubled in downtown. Um, and you know we have two new hotels that are in construction right now, so it's really changing the whole environment. I think that's one of the reasons we landed the Super Bowl, don't you? Yes, um, the Super Bowl um, I think came here for um, for a variety of reasons, but really that downtown focus, um, Mike Bidwell's willingness to uh, to center the package around uh, the downtown vitality. Um, and it's really, it's paying dividends because we just secured the final four and uh, through, you know, great work of, you know, ASU and Steve Moore at the convention center. But that final four package was very downtown centric also. And they looked at what the Super Bowl was doing and they saw that they could really have a vibrant event here. So what's the, the four? Final, the, so the final four is uh, for NCAA basketball. Uh, and we were able to secure, for the first time ever, the, um, uh, the 2017 uh, Final Four. So the, the two games will be out in Glendale, uh, but the big convention activity and, and much of the party activity, just like the Super Bowl, will be centered in downtown, downtown Phoenix. So it's, we're on a little bit of a run. Super Bowl this year, National Championship College football game next year, uh, the Final Four the following year. So it, it's, it's pretty good right now. So what is your organization's role in the Super Bowl? So, um, so uh, a big part of our organization is uh, the Downtown Phoenix Partnership, and they're responsible for working with the businesses within the downtown core. So uh, Super Bowl Central um, is going to be concentrated within the downtown core, the football part of it and the, you know, the corporate activity and the street uh, party. So, uh, so we are the folks that work every day with the businesses in terms of uh, street closures, making sure people can get in and out of their buildings, coordinate uh, with the Suns and the Diamondbacks, et cetera. So we've got that built-in infrastructure to do that. But what's really neat about the Super Bowl also is that we've got uh, these really emerging vibrant areas around downtown, you know, Garfield, Evans Churchill, Roosevelt, Grand Avenue, and we're working really to tie them into kind of the center of activity within the downtown core. And for people who live in the far north, can we park during the Super Bowl? Yes, so um, the, one of the beauties of, of downtown Phoenix is that there is uh, significant parking, uh, but you're gonna see lots of communication about uh, parking plans, parking options for people uh, to park downtown. There's a lot of structured parking, uh, but the other really important thing is that um, uh, downtown is the epicenter of our light rail and transit system. So uh, there are uh, many park and ride opportunities on the light rail where it's gonna be relatively easy just to take the train into downtown, enjoy yourself. They're going to 
uh, run the train uh, as long as they need to to accommodate the Super Bowl Central. They're going to add cars to that. So I, I do think the combination of the, the large amount of parking that is downtown, uh, the train and other transit options, uh, I think we're going to make it all work. I know we're adding trains, and I believe we're even beefing up bus service, too. Yes, from different yes. Parts. Uh, we're doing that, and we are going to uh, over-communicate in terms of people understanding how uh, the system uh, is going to work. Um, you know, we've become very uh, effective and connected through our web page and social media, um, and we're going to use all of the vehicles, um, you know, to tell folks uh, how to use downtown during the So the can they go on Downtown Inc.? Yes, so uh, they can go on uh, downtownphoenix.com uh, uh, or the host committee uh, for uh, the Super, local Super Bowl host committee also has a web page um, uh, whose, um, whose name escapes me right at this moment, but we'll, uh, okay. we'll, we'll get that uh, for you. Um, and, um, and we're gonna, there's gonna be extensive communication. That's great. I, I mean, it's really excited. I'm, I'm feeling the energy beginning to flow. People are, if we get through Christmas, next things, people are thinking Super Bowl. So uh, I'm really anxious to see all the activities. I have never seen such a party planned in downtown Phoenix as what you are working on. Yeah, it's, um, uh, Councilwoman, it's, it's really great. And, the, and there's also a lot of, you know, you know, smaller things going on that kind of add to the ambience that will be there for the Super Bowl. I mean, we do an event every um, Monday in conjunction with the city, uh, the uh, BFIT program called Meet Me Downtown, where we do a three mile walk, where we have hundreds of people coming downtown and doing a fitness walk downtown. They start at Cityscape where the ice skating rink is. So you've got all of these young people and kids skating. You've got all of these adults going on the fitness walk. And to have all of these uh, people congregating downtown has been has been a really good thing. Tonight is the the local Festivus uh, event at the public market. So a Super Bowl is going to be this big thing that's going to add to that. But there's a lot of event activity occurring downtown now. So we want everyone to come downtown. Uh, I know it. We worked and are working uh, to make sure everything's secure and it's going to be a safe event for all ages. Correct? Yes. So. Uh, there are going to be ticketed events that the NFL is going to have, but Super Bowl Central is a family-friendly, uh, free event uh, that's going to really be a festival and a party. And um, if your thing is the arts community, uh, it, there's going to be connectivity to the Roosevelt the Row area and uh, to Grand Avenue. So there's going to be something for, for everybody. If your thing is football, you're going to be you're going to be overwhelmed with activities. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate all the hard work you do. Up next, the Super Bowl is coming, and this means major activity in downtown. We're going to hear more about it when we return. Keep watching on the issues. What would you do if you saw a dog, a cat, or a horse that looked like this? Animal cruelty and neglect is a crime that needs to be reported. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams, here with my rescued pets, Henry and Cheyenne. And I'm Councilman Michael Novikowski, asking for your help. If you ever suspect animal cruelty, call Crime Stop, the Arizona Humane Society, or the Sheriff's Office. Animal cruelty is a crime. And together, we could stop it. Welcome back to On the Issues. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams. More than one million people are expected to visit Super Bowl Central when it takes over and transforms downtown Phoenix. Joining me now to talk about the big event is Terry Medeksky with the Downtown Phoenix, Inc. Terry, welcome to the show. Thank you. I hear you are Terry, the super Super Bowl planner. I have been immersed in all things Super Bowl and we are really excited to have Super Bowl 49 in downtown. Well, tell us what's happening. Well, gosh, I think everything. Um, the NFL has decided to have downtown Phoenix as its home for most of their activities. Which are? So we have the NFL Experience, which is their ticketed fan experience at the Convention Center. The Media Center, which for the first time is open to the public. So the Media Center will be in the Convention Center West Building, um, where fans can come down and watch their favorite players and coaches be interviewed. Um, there's the NFL Honors, which is a celebrity red carpet event where people can watch. 
their favorite celebrities and players go in and out. That's at Symphony Hall on Saturday. And then on top of all of this is a free family-friendly sort of festival-like experience called Super Bowl Central, which is taking place on um, about 12 blocks of downtown Phoenix. What day? Uh, so Super Bowl Central is January 28th through February 1st, so it's five days. Again, it's free. It's very family-friendly. Um, there's going to be a main stage with entertainment program throughout the day. Um, there's going to be the iconic Roman numerals, which are over 30 feet tall and 100 feet wide. There's going to be a wow factor, um, where in New York they had an eight-lane toboggan run, and in Indianapolis was a zip line. Well, here in Phoenix, we're going to have something that's just as wonderful for fans to come down and experience that's representative of our state and our natural wonders. So is it still a secret? Uh, it is still a secret. Darn. <laughs> Maybe for another few days. Um, but we're really excited that that's going to be on Super Bowl Central. Um, and then the main broadcast partners, so NBC, CNN, NFL Network, will all have a place on... Um, on Super Bowl Central. So we're really excited about it. How many countries usually cover this press-wise? Well, I know we have about 5,000 international media that will be housed right here in downtown Phoenix. I bet it's a little hard to get a room downtown right now. Um, well, I think in the core, um, the main downtown area, um, the rooms are probably filled with staff and support staff, but just on the outskirts of downtown, I'm sure there are some rooms available for, for fans. And there's so many ways to get here. There are. Um, I really want to make sure people understand, not only is downtown ready, um, we're excited about this. We've been working really hard for the past several months to make sure people can get downtown. Um, so the buses and the light rail system will actually have expanded capacity. Uh, they'll be running later hours and increased frequencies, and there will be more park and rides added, um, making it convenient for, for fans to come downtown. But on top of that, if people do choose to drive, streets are open and there's parking. Um, and so we want to make sure people realize that every building, every business has access. Um, people can come in and park and then walk around, and then they'll be able to leave um, with little inconvenience. Okay, so I have, uh, let's say, a couple 10-year-olds I want to bring them. What would you think were the best events for them? Oh, gosh. Well, I think the NFL experience is probably a great first start. Um, so to come down to the NFL experience at the convention center, and then when done with that, to walk out to Super Bowl Central because everything else there is free. So um, they can do the wow factor, they can participate in some interactive activities, and then every night there's a nightly fireworks show at about 10 o'clock. So it should be a really great way to end the day. How exciting. And then let's say we have the, the college crowd. Absolutely. What fun things are there for them? Absolutely. So if um, for the college crowd that can stay awake a little bit later, um, there's going to be the main stage. And so even after 10 o'clock, you're going to see some activity on that main stage. Um, if anybody's over 21, there will be beer gardens and those will be open as well. But the businesses, all of our businesses are going to have activities going on in conjunction with Super Bowl. So even if um, you're, you've done all the activities um, and you're ready to move on to something else, our businesses will have a lot of exciting promotions and specials, discounts and activities. Tell us a little bit about security. Well, gosh, there will be um, several hundred uniformed police officers that are visible um, for every shift. So we're expecting a very high presence. But on top of that, there's going to be um, uniform security and then um, a couple hundred volunteers. And so at any one time, you're going to be able to see, um, you know, uniformed presence, whether it's police or whether it's security. And then, of course, we have our ambassadors. Tell um, us about the ambassadors. Yeah, our ambassadors, we have a, a great team. They're in bright orange shirts and they're connected by radio. So they do serve as eyes and ears with the police. But their primary mission is to help our visitors um, and by providing them with additional information or directions or walking with them to their destination. So if we have visitors coming downtown for Super Bowl, 
our ambassadors are just the right resource um, for them to learn what's going on. So what do you think is going to be the highlight? Well, um, the highlight is that I think downtown Phoenix will be on the international stage, not just for one day, not just for two days, but for about 10 days. And I think that's really exciting for, for us as a community. Um, I think Super Bowl Central, this free um, family-friendly campus is going to bring people that we haven't seen in downtown ever before. So we're very excited about that. And just knowing that people can come down, um, our businesses are open, we're all excited and ready. There's public transportation, light rail, and then parking is available. And we have the resources to um, make your trip down here um, convenient. Can you talk about, I know we have a, a I'll call it a committee uh, that has been organizing this, uh, has many city departments. Can you talk about some of the makeup of that so sure. people understand how complex it is and all the details that you've thought about? Sure. I don't know the exact number of working groups, but it's something about 20 different working groups that have been meeting for going on a year that have been focused on transportation, parking, marketing, um, permitting, licensing, public safety. So every aspect that's involved in putting on event of this scale, the city has been leading these working groups for going on a year. Um, and so that's just gotten us to be where, where we're prepared, but we're focused on every single aspect. And then I think public safety has an additional effort um, with an additional, I think 20 or so working groups focused on making sure this is a safe event. I know um, I've heard several members of the committees talk about the detail and, and I mean they're talking about everything s safe on the streets, at the events, mm -hmm. um, I, sorry to say rounding up child prostitution because mm -hmm. that's something that comes to town that follows the Super Bowl and all the efforts putting in um, already mm -hmm. uh, compared to not only the event itself. I think. Uh, and we talk a lot about what financially, do you have any idea what costs and what the rewards are? Um, I, I'm not sure what the exact numbers are, but I know this event is um, expected with a million people coming to downtowns is expected to be quite an economic boost for um, not just the city of Phoenix, but for the state. Now, do people have to, I mean, you talked about free events, mm -hmm. one back up. Mm -hmm. Are, are there events you pay for? Uh, the NFL Experience is a ticketed event. That's the NFL's fan experience at the convention center. Um, so there is a price to get into that. And then Media Day, um, which is at US Airways Center, there, that is a ticketed event as well. Um, and that event is where you can see the two teams that are going to be in the Super Bowl um, being interviewed, so the full um, coaching staff and all the players will be at that media day, but everything else is free. So the media center is free where there's Radio Row, Super Bowl Central is free. So there's a lot for families to, to come and enjoy. So I, I know I, the retailers are stocking up. Um, mm -hmm. The restaurants are being prepared to serve mm -hmm. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, City's looking forward to hotel tax and, and car rentals. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so it's a very exciting prospects. So uh, to buy the tickets, can they go online? And if so, where? Um, they can go online. The main website to look at is azsuperbowl.com. You can find all of your information on that website to plan your trip downtown. Okay, so you have a map. Um, there are maps available, yes. And you have events. Yes, there's a full listing of events. Can you buy the tickets there? Um, there will be, if it's not on that website, there will be links to take you to buy tickets. Okay, so what else do we need to know? Um, what you need to know is that this is going to be just probably an experience that we've never had before, so we really want people to know to come down. Um, the ambassadors are a great resource. Um, people can reach them by calling 602 Four nine five one five zero zero in advance of coming downtown. The ambassadors can actually tell people where there's available parking. So even the day of, if, if people want to come down and they're not sure where to go, 
the ambassadors can tell you, sort of track your route. If you're coming from North Central Phoenix, here's how you get here. If you're coming from Tempe, this is how we recommend you get here. And here's where there's some available parking. So we really want people to have um, a positive and memorable experience when coming down during Super Bowl Central, because we sure hope to have Super Bowl back in a few years. I hope so too, but I know that uh, this is a, a family experience. We have it, uh, things for every age. We do. And uh, you can create a memory, a lifetime memory. We do, absolutely. And it's such a great opportunity to showcase who we are as a downtown community. So we have, you know, the media has its eyes on Super Bowl Central, but there's so much else going on in our community with the surrounding neighborhoods and we have the galleries and the artists and the restaurants and there's so much to do whether you're coming for Super Bowl or not we want to invite everyone down to take part in who we are as a community and to come back oh. well I'm I'm most anxious uh, one want to hear the secret right I do too what's the, what's the big <laughs> The wow. Even, the wow factor, is that what we call it? The wow factor. We're waiting too. So maybe oh, in, you a, don't in know a few days. Either? Maybe in a few days. Because I've heard this mentioned, and I love a zip line. I think they're cool. Um, so I want to see how we can surpass uh, the last Super Bowl. I think we can. So, and I hear the Super Bowl, the game itself, although it's a Glendale major star uh, at halftime. Yes. Yes. So the game is in Glendale. Um, they do have activities around the arena, um, but so everything else is pretty much here. I know. We're very fortunate. We are. We're very happy, and we want to express our uh, appreciation to Mr. Bidwell. Bidwells, I guess, both of them. They have been great partners. They have really helped Phoenix showcase, well, actually, Arizona, when you think about it. Uh, it really helps put us on the map and let people know how we have changed, how we have grown, matured. And uh, we have a lot to offer, not only in downtown, but everywhere. So this really puts us on the map. So It sure does. Your contribution, um, I, I just want to tell you, is greatly appreciated by so many people. I hear kudos for you all the time. Ask Terry. Terry will do it. Terry is the queen of oh. Super Bowl. She is the party planner. So thank you for taking oh, your sure. time. Oh, it's been the most fun I've had. I've been here a long time. Um, and we, I was here when we had Super Bowl in 2008. Um, and this is just so much. It's a lot of fun for me. And it's going to be very different than 2008. So even after um, so many years, I'm really excited. Well, well thank you for being on today's show and thank telling you. us. And thank I look you, forward. I look forward to... Uh, talking with you in the future and finding out what the secret is. <laughs> That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show, call my office at 602-262-7444 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district one. We'll see you next time on the Issues. Yeah.